that we are alive. It's another day that we can give God praise and thanks for his goodness and for his loving kindness to us. Let's stand together. God is a good God. Is he a good God to you? He's a good God. Let's just give him a round of applause at this time. As we meditate and think about his goodness, every one of us would have cause to give him praise, would have cause to give him thanks. He is a good God. He is a mighty God. He is a great God. And especially at this time of year, we remember that he came and he continues to be so good to us. So we just want to welcome those who are online. You are viewing Glad Tidings Tabernacle, pastored by the General Bishop, Sonny E. Williams. O oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O oh, come ye, O oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King 
Hallelujah. We call on Deacon Plato at this time to pray for us. Good morning, church. I greet you in the most powerful name on planet Earth. Father, we just want to give you praise this morning for your goodness. We want to give you thanks, oh God, because you are alive and we are alive in our right mind this morning. So we are here to give you praise and thanks for your goodness, oh God. Many of us went through a lot this week, oh God, but we are in the land of the living. So we are here to glorify and to lift up your holy name. Because you are worthy to be praised, O oh God. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, because we know that what you can do for us, O oh God, no one else can do. Lord, we just want to lift up your holy name this morning. Your name is powerful. Your name is mighty. O oh God, you are a great physician. You are a great healer. O oh God, no one else can do what you can do for us today. That's why we are here today to give you thanks. And to give you praise, O oh God. Lord, as we bring this service before you this morning, we ask, O oh God, that you're going to tabernacle among us today. Because this is the day that you had made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. O oh God, we just want to thank you, Lord. Many of us, O oh God, come thus far by faith. O oh God, leaning on your everlasting arm. Trusting in your holy words. Your words never fail, O oh God. You are still, O oh God, a healer. You are a still provider. That's why we can call upon you, O oh God. Night and day, O oh God. You are just a little prayer away. That's why we are leaning on you today. O oh God, we want to trust you today, O oh God, for what you're going to do in our midst today. You're going to touch heart. You're going to touch soul. You're going to touch life today in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we bring the worship leaders before you. As they sing, oh God, the songs, oh God, are going to go forth. They're going to bless some heart, challenge some life today in the name of Jesus. Bless the musician as they play skillfully this morning. Lord, anoint their fingers today in the name of Jesus. Oh God, remember your spoken words. As it come, oh God, as it go through the pews today, oh God, it's going to challenge and save, oh God, those who are listening by wherever they are today. Lord, we just want to give you thanks and praise. We come against the adversary. Oh, God, we will look to show up himself, oh, God, in this place today. And we pull down every stronghold in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bind principalities and powers. And we cast out every hindrance today in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we shall have a grand time in your midst today. Bless everyone who are here today. Those who come in from afar, oh God, we pray that you're going to bless them. They're going to have a good time in their midst today. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and everyone say, Amen. Hallelujah. You may have your seats at this time. I just want to welcome all of you who have come into God's house today. We are indeed happy that you have chosen to be here. Um, do we have anyone worshiping with us for the very first time? No first timers, but I can see many, many new faces. Oh, but nobody was standing. Welcome today. We, I can see many, a, a few new faces to me, but it means that you are not new to glad tidings because you didn't stand as a first timer. I also want to welcome those of you. A number of you are back home for the holidays, as the song says, and I want to especially welcome you here today. I don't know all the faces. I don't remember all the names. Sometimes when you go foreign, you come back, you look different. Not true. But I think I see Sister Jack's sister. Am I right? Yes, welcome back. And I see Colin's sister. Welcome back. I see just coming in, yes, the M Sister Monique and her family, husband and daughters. Welcome back. Am I missing anybody else coming back? If, oh yes, she's hiding behind the column from my end. Sister Tamara, welcome back from university. I am sure you're happy to be home for some good home-cooked meals. 
And those of you who are joining us again online, we say a very special welcome. And we trust that today, as together we worship the King, that he will meet us all at the point of our needs. Bless you. Do we have anybody celebrating this week? Today through to Saturday, you're having a birthday. Day. And yours on Friday. Happy birthday when that day comes. What about a wedding anniversary? Anybody married around this time in December? Yes, we have our brother there, our flutist. <laughs> brother King, when is your anniversary? Today. Okay. Happy anniversary. How many years? 13. 30 years. That's a long stretch. Congratulations and God bless you continually. You and Sister King, of course. Let's stand together again as we continue to worship the Lord. He's our King. He's our King of Kings. He's our Lord of Lords. And we crown him today King of Kings. Crown him King of Kings. Crown him Lord. Of Lords, wonderful Counselor, the mighty
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, 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 what a wonder you are. Jesus, 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 what a wonder you are. Oh, Jesus, what a wonder you are. Die 
to this King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords at this time as we invite our Bishop to raise the offering. Amen. God is good. Amen. And my role this morning is to just put to just put the the giving this morning in some kind of context. And very often, you hear Philippians 4 and 19 quoted, my God shall meet all your needs according to his riches in glory. But could I now put the same verse back into its context? And let's see what it says to us. And so the, the chapter 4 of Philippians, and I just read the verse, the, the, the verse 18. I have received full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Aphroditus 
the gifts you sent me. They are fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And then verse 19 is the conjunction that says, And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So you note there that from the act of this very generous brother who supplied the needs of this missionary Paul, the verses tie there. Out of his own sacrificial generosity, Paul says, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. It is generosity that releases the generous hands of God. And that's what our giving is all about here this morning. A generous God. And we return to the God who is responsible for giving all things. So let's pray. We bless you, Father. We bless you. You are an extremely generous God. The universe functions on the principle of your generosity. The sun gives its light and plants grow. Plants give their fruits, O oh Lord God. And the cycle goes on. A universe sustained by every unit releasing what it ought to be given. And we pray today for the release of every act of generosity by your people now, God. We pray that there will be an equal release of blessings on those hands that will release, oh God, to your work today. We thank you, Father, for the ability to work. We thank you for bringing power and intelligence and creativity and opportunities, oh God, and access. And we ask you now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you will bless those hands. May those hands, oh God, always have to give to release to your work and to bless others. We give you thanks now in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's all give to the glory and honor of Jesus. Hallelujah. Messiah is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Messiah is the King of Kings. Messiah is the Lord of Lords. Messiah is the King of Kings. Messiah is the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. 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 Messiah is the King.
Hallelujah. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord. Hallelujah. You may have your seats at this time. And at this time, we will listen to a spoken word from Brother Adrian.
Good morning, church. And how are we this morning? Yes, boy, just now it's Christmas. And when you pass through tongue during the week is, boy, madness, yes? Madness. Everybody going and they're looking for a gift. They're looking for what they could pick up. And, well, before I, I, I do this spoken word, actually, I just want to call um, Ronaldo Isaacs, please. Just want to, yeah, you could give him a round of applause as he comes. Yeah. Just want to show my appreciation. So, Ronaldo, this is for you, and just want to encourage you to continue to be a good boy and to do well in school and to grow up and to love God, right? All right, and you can have a seat. <laughs> yeah, I really encourage them, as, as they say, to encourage the young ones. So the spoken word that I'll be doing this morning, it's called The Gift That Keeps On Giving, and I pray that it blesses your heart. The definition of a gift is something voluntarily given to someone without compensation, and the receiver is by no way obligated to give anything back for things to become equal or even. And if, for a particular reason, that person feels that they have to work for that gift, then it's no longer a gift. It's no reward. Because gifts are an expression of our love. We give gifts to those we think about and to those we care for. So isn't it wonderful that Yahweh is a God that loves to give gifts? John 3, 16 depicts this. And if you know it, can you please say it along with me after the count of three? One, two, three. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes, the birth of Christ was the greatest gift of all time. You may ask me why. Well, I will explain it to you in three points. One, because God loves every person born into this world so much so he chose to give gifts. Two persons, two gifts were given at the same time. The only begotten son and everlasting life. Three, the first gift gives the other gift. The begotten son gives everlasting life. But the begotten son also gave other gifts continually. So he is the gift that keeps on giving literally. He is the greatest gift of all time. He limited himself and chose to be forsaken so that we can be forgiven. Our payment for sinning was eternal destruction, but God was willing to beg us pardon. So we who are villains have an opportunity to be a part of his kingdom. This gift gives us salvation. This gift gives us salvation. This gift gifts us salvation and it's beautiful when we think about it because this gift his name is Jesus he is the gift that keeps on giving thank you amen we've been singing about him all morning because he is who we've come to celebrate hallelujah we're going to have our scripture reading at this time by Sister Kiara Burnett, and it's taken from Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 through to 18. Let's welcome her. One of this year's scholars. Good morning, church. Please stand for the scripture reading. Scripture reading is taken from Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 to 18. Here beginneth. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, 
for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I call my son. When, her, when Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and in its vicinity, who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are the more. Here is the scripture reading. Thank you, Kiara. Just remain standing as I present to you our speaker for today, our very own, my very own, Bishop Sonny Williams. Thank you so much. You can have your seat. You may have your seat. And a good morning. It's Christmas. And I, I want to endorse the welcome this morning. So to all the persons who are here, welcome. The, the Constance family is celebrating a reunion. So we welcome you all. Could the whole constant tribe stand, please? If you, if you see yourself as a tribe. <laughs> oh. So welcome today. And the Huggins, welcome home. Um, and we wish you all the best in your reunion. Sister Alana, welcome home from Cole, Canada. <laughs> Sister Gardner, welcome home. Um, Sister Tamara, welcome home after your first semester at the University of the West Indies. And uh, all the others, there are some of you here for the dedication of a baby here this morning. Just welcome. We are happy to have you here um, today. Let us pray. Father, we are grateful. We are grateful for all the wonderful things that you continue to do for us. God, the year for many of us is full of challenges, but we've made it. God, there were for some medical challenges, financial challenges, relational challenges. You've kept us, and we are so thankful today, O oh Lord, for your great love towards us. And we pray now, Father, as we look into your word. I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. God, let the eyes of my heart be open to what you are saying to us. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. So keep your, keep your Bibles open to the book of Matthew, chapter 2, and the verse 13 through 18. I'm just obeying the Bible. It says you must lay aside the weight. <laughs> I know I get you on that one. Yes. 
So our reading is the book of Matthew, chapter 2, and 13 through 18. And as I look into the, sto the Christmas story, this caught my attention. And I see Jesus here in our text as an intercontinental refugee. And much is said these days about displaced people with the, with the wars that are going on in major blocks of the world. Much of much on the news are about refugees, people who have been displaced by wars and, uh, and famine and persecution and uh, so on and so on. And we note that in our text that Jesus became a political refugee. And we say intercontinental because he lived in Bethlehem, Asia. And he, he was displaced to Africa. So he's a refugee. The family, it says... Because you'll skip the text and go to the first one. The text says that the family flees to Egypt. 13 to 15. When they had gone, the Magi, the wise men, An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. So it was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet. Out of Egypt, I called my son. Jesus became a refugee. And the United Nations defines a refugee as owing to well-founded fear of being persecuted for reason of race, religion, nationality, membership, for a particular social group or political opinion is outside the country of his nationality and is unable or owing to such fear is willing to avail himself of the protection of that country or who having or who not having a nationality or being outside the country of former habitual residents is unable or owing to such fear is unwilling to return to it. And so many around the world are displaced because of various reasons that they must leave their home. And the United Nations estimated that by the end of 
2021, there were 89.3 million people forcefully displaced worldwide. That's, that's a lot of people. 89 million. Displaced. And then you know we, we, we sit. And we sit sadly. As Russia. Bombs the Ukraine. And that has led to. Some 8 million. Refugees. And internally, internally display some 5.9 million people. And the conflict seems not to be, there is no end to that conflict right now. And uh, think of what the conflict has caused around the world. Global supply chain. Because Ukraine is a major producer of wheat. The inflation that it has caused. And the problem with, with fuel. Fuel and food. And, and think of the children like Jesus. Jesus. Who was displaced for some 7.5 million Ukrainian children have been displaced last year. And we, we, we what could we do in the West? I suppose you and I could do, could do, could do much. We could pray. And remember your voice, your voice is not, you may think that your voice is not heard, but we do have a responsibility to, to lift our voices. And then in Syria, Syria, that war in Syria, civil, civil war in Syria that, that started in 2011. That displaced some 5.4 million, internally 6.9 million people. And... Syria accounts for some 25% of refugees around the world. Wars. Displacing people. And then you know we sit... We sit not comfortable with the situation in right in the Caribbean. The tension between Venezuela and Guyana over border dispute. But Venezuela already has her problems with with displaced people, some 6.1 million Venezuelans have been displaced due to political turmoil. In Trinidad, an unofficial count in Trinidad saying that there are some 100,000 Venezuelans in Trinidad and Tobago. And add, add a war, add a war, 
had a war there and uh, we here would have to be prepared for people fleeing both from Guyana and um, in Venezuela, adding to the problems that already exist in the world with refugees and displaced people. I'm sure we see the problems that the United States of America, the border control have, the Mexican border with caravan of people traveling up from Central America to cross the border. It's unprecedented. But people seem to be fleeing from wherever they are for a better life. And then the Israel, Israel Palestine crisis. You can't help being moved emotionally by this conflict. And this sermon doesn't intend to give a view as to the war. I, I, I've been doing that in another forum. And uh, last um, Wednesday in, in our Bible study, we, 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 we start looking at some of that. And when we continue next year, I would invite you to be a part we would express a, a biblical view in, in, the, in the studies. But it's just to show you the humanitarian crisis that wars do cause. So already, 52% of the population is internally displaced. Israel say we're going to be bombing, move to the south. So 1.4 million move to the south and Hamas move to the south and Israel move to the south. And you wonder in this narrow strip of land, where do you go? And there's a lot of Blaming as to who is this and who is that. But I'm making all this point to see how relevant our Christmas story is. Our Christmas, this Christmas story touches on every, every facet of life that you could think of. Jesus, the son of God, when he came to earth before he was two years old, he became an intercontinental political refugee. Jesus entered human life. His entry to human life was not spared of the awkward tensions and human dilemmas. And, and that is saying to us as an application it means that like Jesus, we must engage the world's pains. The world has a lot of pain today. Jesus sought refugee, political asylum in Egypt because of a jealous political leader. Jesus was probably close to two years and spent his formative years in Egypt, displaced from his homeland. Herod heard that another king was born. What has changed what has changed in our world since Jesus? Nothing has changed. Man is still, man is still sinful. Jeremiah says that the heart of man is desperately wicked. What has changed? Politicians, world leaders will defend their interests. 
hasn't changed. That will not change. Enemies change, really. But their interest ain't going to change. Not going to change at all. At the end of the day, big powers, political powers, look about their own interest, their security. And our world leaders are reckless in their pursuit of their political agenda. And this is what is driving the displacement of people. It drove Jesus from his hometown to Egypt as a refuge. And our text, our text really, our text doesn't say where he stayed. Obviously he stayed somewhere. Now this is good news. Certainly good news. Good news. It's good news to those who have been displaced by natural disasters or famine or political unrest. Jesus understands. Amen. Because he was one like you. He understands human world pain. And as we celebrate, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, understand this, that our Savior went through it. He was a part of it. But also note in our text, note from our text, that this outraged king resort to infant side. Verse 16 to 18 of Matthew 2. When Herod re realized that he, he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and gave order to kill all the baby boys of Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children and refuse to be comforted because they are no more. An entire, an entire village of baby boys slaughtered due to the insane rage of a jealous king. And it reminds us, it re this is a reminder of the growing problems regarding children in our time. Children who become the victims of adults, the sins of adults. 
like Rachel. Mothers weep all over the world. Especially, especially in hoods. We don't have ghettos here. In the hoods, them. We call them the hoods. Because their children are no more. How the decisions of adults affect children. Jesus fled and escaped. So you can say, these children die for Jesus. And Rachel wailing couldn't be comforted. But who could comfort a mother when her children are being destroyed? Who could comfort a woman? Yes, Jesus offers comfort to those who, who grieve the loss of children. And right here at home, right here at home in St. Vincent, there were a lot of weeping went up for boys this year. The murders. Remember, they have mothers, you know. And you hear the outcry of mothers. Son killed, gone down. They're no more. And what's driving? What's driving the rage? What's driving? What's behind all of this? Selfishness. Selfishness. Whether it be drugs, whether, whether whatever, whatever deal turned bad. An order is given to kill them all out. What has changed? I am saying, what has changed? It is as it were. This story is written today. Centuries ago, Jesus entered human life amidst all of these challenges. And these challenges still exist. What is that saying to us as believers? It's saying that some kind of engagement, some kind of engagement is necessary by all of us. And some of us are better equipped, gifted, resourced in order to respond to some of these challenges. Some of us who the Lord has, he has blessed you and put you in position. And that's why Christians must must seize every opportunity to serve in, in whatever field of the world and bring it under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So, for some persons, diplomacy, foreign relation, all of these fields, let us not say that, you know, it is them guys. Them guys up there. You know them guys downtown. Them guys in the parliament. They're responsible. Don't forget we send them there. Now, so? Why are you not answering me? Didn't we send them there? And what did we send them there for? To do our bidding. Now, so? You, 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 you. We sent them there. We choose them. They came to us and they beg us and they say, well, if you vote for me, you know, I will, I will do, you know, no, no. We send them there and because we send them there, then we must have a part to play with the agenda that they will execute down there. And, and we must never sit back in any country of the world and allow men to make decisions that will impact. Who they impact? People, vulnerable people, children. They, don't, they, they hardly impact people who are well off. 
that you, you, you are spared. You could, you could answer your way. You could hire a lawyer and you could do all of that. But the masses, we are talking about the masses, the decision that the masses will make every day that will affect people, the masses, the majority of the people. We must, like Jesus, Jesus entered the phase so that he can en engage the pain. And we ourselves must be a part of the engagement of some of this. You know, in countries we hear, you hear big blocks, big blocks, evangelicals <laughs> support this party. And, and this other one thing. Let me get rid of that kind of blocking up now. And let's look at the real issues them to say, hey, no, no, we're not going to blindly support you because we traditionally support you. We support you on the grounds of principle. And if you, if you change, once you change, we will get rid of you. But when you're loyal to a party, you're going to stay with the party regardless of what the party does. I am asking us, change that because Jesus must be Lord and it's Jesus who drives, must drive our everything, our involvement in everything. Jesus came in the midst of this. Also, what could we do for the children? A whole village Wiped out because a king is jealous. He heard that there is another king born. Another one. So if another one born, then my reign, my reign then is threatened. Kill all them boys. And I tell you, church, we've got to get very active in the lives of children. Children. And we could do so at all levels, all levels. We must look out for children. Rachel weep and couldn't be comforted because her children were no more. Some years ago, I had a meeting with our ministries coordinator. And as it was my first meeting with her, because she had just, the former one died, had a heart attack and died. And this one was assuming. And we had an online meeting. And as the meeting started, the Lord gave me a word to say, Pawi has become an adult fellowship. Much of what we do is surrounding adults. Lots of activities that churches are involved in are about adults. We are big. We, we, most of us are preparing to exit life. Not so. We're preparing the next move for us. We have some fantastic things to do, but the next move for us, those of us who are over 60 and so on, we have our eyes to say, boy, you know, some, somebody used to say that the Lord doesn't send the, the chariot for them and they're praying that somehow, the, somehow it's going to get puncture and slow down and give them some more time. But by and large, we adults, we, our lives are are formed already. We have to be thinking, what will become of the next generation? What will become of the children of Welcome, Georgie Valley, Belair, Ashburton, Daphne, Kilbony? Listen, we see these young people growing up and they grow up quick. What are they doing for them? Are we going to wait until mothers are weeping because their sons, we are growing accustomed to that, gone down, killed? A 
Where shall we? You know, the normal cry, you hear it on television. This was a wonderful boy. Wonderful what boy? <laughs> well, sometimes they are wonderful boys because they bring, their, they bring the proceeds of their criminality and feed the village and buy the whole village and the village just shut up. The point is, as children get out of line and out of hand, even we with our organized lives ain't safe anymore. Ain't safe. They're going to rape your daughters. They're going to break up your house when you're gone to work. They will hold you up and rob you. We've got to engage. Engage. Jesus came into all of this human pain. Human pain. And think of around the world. Think of what is happening around the world. And the displacement. Now we, we're preparing for Christmas. And we have all kind of Christmas tree. And we have all kind of ham. And we have all kind of thing for Christmas. And we life good. We ain't hearing no bombs. displaced this is the Jesus this is the Jesus of Christmas came right amidst it and the issues remain the same man is lost fallen and all that we see is a manifestation of the fallenness of man Jesus understands no matter what you go through, you can't say, ah, he doesn't understand. Our Savior been there. Been one of that. He been there. He understands. And the Bible says that seeing that we have such a high priest who is touched with the feelings of our infirmity, let's come to him with a sense of confidence because he's been there. He knows about your problems. Been there. That's the Jesus. That's the Jesus we serve. That's the Jesus we celebrate this Christmas. Let us pray. Father, thank you. We praise you, Lord. Jesus, we will love you. We love you. You came into our world, our experience, and you understand, Lord. And we honor you, oh God today. We bless you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus. No, not one. No, not one, none else could heal all our souls' diseases. No, not one, no, not one, Jesus knows all about our struggles. Like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could heal all our souls' diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done.
Savior. Uh, what a Savior. He's an international Savior. Amen. No matter what culture you're from, he understands. He's been there. He's been there. And he understands. I wonder if this morning, if there's anybody in the building who said, I need that Savior. I want a relationship with this Savior. And if you're here this morning, you could stand, you could come down here, you could meet me, you could raise your hand to say, I need that Savior. I need that Lord. Okay, we prepare now for we have a baby to be dedicated so we ask the parents and the godparents of that baby to please come Thomas, when he cometh to make up his His jewels, precious jewels, His love and His own. Like the stars of the morning, His bright crown adorning. They shall shine.
give the photographer. Does it have a photographer? All right. You know, we take very seriously the dedication of, of babies because children are our future. And someone says, children are the messages that we send into the future. Children will be the leaders of the world tomorrow. Children would lead us. When I can't lead anymore and I can't contribute, these, this will be the leader. And the leaders, we are preparing the leaders for the future. And so the mother and father before me here this morning, you hold in your hands the future. You hold in your hand God's gift to you. What you make of this child would be your gift to God. We pray that God will grant you the wisdom to be able to nurture this child in the way she should go. We we'll want both of you to make some vows here at this altar here this morning. In the sight of God and in the face of this company, do you solemnly undertake to bring up your child in the fear and admonition of the Lord? If so, we do. Do you promise to lead your child early to accept Christ as a personal Lord and Savior? If so, we do. Do you promise to set before your child a godly example? If so, we do. Let us pray. In every caution, eh? You keep in every thing. Amen. Lord, we, we praise you for this life. And Lord, we exclaim like the psalmist, we fearfully and wonderfully made. Great are your works, God. You saw this child in the darkness of the womb. And you knitted her being together. Jeremiah went further when he said, before this child was conceived, you saw her. You knew her. You ordained her for a specific purpose. So God, for the purpose for which this child was created, we ask you, Father, that it will be established in the earth in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, we speak to the experiences of, this, of the earth that they would line up in the fulfilling of your decree that was made in heaven. We ask, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that this Life would be lived in total obedience to you, God. Thank you for your touch upon her parents that, oh God, you will give them the, the ability to be able to fashion and to mold this life, oh God, in the way that this child should go. We bless her now, oh Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let your hands be upon her and guide her, O oh God. We pray for protection over her life. Oh God, she will grow 
physically, mentally, Lord, socially and spiritually, God, a fully rounded life. We bless you, God, for doing it today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Alexis, Rhea, Joy. We anoint you with oil as a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And we dedicate you now unto God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, so in a while, we're going to be asking, we're going to give the, our, our visiting brothers and sisters an opportunity. All of you will come to greet. But at this time, we, on a third Sunday, we normally take an, um, an extra offering that will go towards our, the construction of our our for building that we are involved in at Daphne, um, Glad Tidings Tabernacle Vision Center. Um, so some persons give monthly, and we bless those who do for that. And some others choose to give this way. So at this time, we invite you to give towards the construction of this new facility for Glad Tidings Tabernacle. If Jesus has given you victory, come and dance and give a praise to him. If Jesus has given you victory, come and dance unto the Lord. Hallelujah, he has given me victory. Hallelujah, he has given me victory.
Alana, Gardner, you want to come and give greetings? Good morning, church. Um, it is always you know, a pleasure to see you and to worship you, but particularly around this time of Advent, right? When we think of Christ's coming as, as we prepare for his coming. And so we think of how is God going to show up in the spaces that we want him to show up in, whether the space is a financial space or, you know, space in your family. How do we want God to show up? Maybe you are, you, you know, you need a new perspective on a situation. Maybe you, you just need to feel his presence more. And so I just want to encourage you that during this, this season, season of Advent that you be more intentional of saying, God, I know I am preparing for you to show up. I'm preparing for you to come. I want you to come in this context, whatever that context is for you, youth, older people, everyone. Know that God is coming, but we have to be in a, in a spirit of preparation for it. And so, like I said, it's always good to see you and to celebrate with you. Um, I was sent here as the representative. If you notice around the church and even in other places, there, there are spots of blues. The Constant family is celebrating um, a reunion or like I, I, I like to say a reuniting because it's more of a, it's not just an event. It's a process. And so even in our various locations, we are re uniting in spirit under the theme, grateful for the past, engage in the present, and hopeful for the future. And so we're just, just so grateful for all that God has done for us as a family. And so um, just want to wish you all of the best from the Huggins and from the Constances. And may God bless you and keep you in so many ways, in ways that you can't even think or fathom. Um, God bless you and take care. Greetings, everyone. Greetings, Bishop, First Lady. How are you? Hello, everybody. No, I'm good. I don't feel that one at all. Come on. Hello, everybody. Okay, a little better. Anyway, I, I brought you greetings from Hartford, Connecticut. And I haven't been home for Christmas in quite a while. I think my last visit here was just before the pandemic, believe it or not. But I just want to give God praise and thanks that he has spared my life so that I can be here. One of the things I was asking for is ham. I, 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 I'm not talking about the ham that, you know, processed ham. I need real ham. So <laughs> I was talking to my sister and my niece. I said, 
I got to get some real ham because that kind of ham that they buy in the store, you know, and I'm used to that. I need the real thing. It brought back so much memories being here at Christmas time when we were kids, what our mother used to say, what it smelled like, the joy we felt we didn't have too much stuff to eat during the year. But Christmas, you had your own juicy. You know, at that during the year, it was four of us, and we have to share one. And I was the smallest one, so I used to get the little bit, you know. But at Christmas time, you had your own. You could do whatever you want. At that time, you, during the year, you have to ask for stuff. But at Christmas time, you can go and cut a piece of cake without you're not going to get a beat in or anything. So it brought back so much memories, and I'm so honored and grateful that I, I am alive to be here and to give God the glory. Since the last time you saw me, actually 2021, I was in a major uh, car accident. My van was total. I think I hit about four or five vehicles. And you know, as we said, Jesus take the wheel. He did. I was going down the hill and the van just turned around because my brakes give out. And I was on my way from Hartford to Philadelphia to look after my vice president, who's my friend. Her mom was 101 when I was doing assisted living, and I promised her I would look after her daughter. She was 86, and be careful what you promise. You've got to be careful what you promise, and you have to make sure that you fulfill that promise. So on my way to see her, my brakes give out. If it was five more minutes um, later, I would have been on the highway. But God knows, and he have a plan for us. And Jesus, he have the future. And I am here today as a miracle. And while I was over there, I had another accident. One was in September, the other one was in April. Somebody ran into the back of the van that I was traveling in, and I got a whiplash, and I stiff neck and spray neck, but I was determined to look after her. And this year, she passed away. So I had this joy and this peace, knowing that I obeyed and I fulfilled my promise. I am also a two-time breast cancer survivor. So in the meantime, I am still looking after people who are affected by cancer with basic needs. That had never stopped. But God is good. God give us the strength. He gave me the ability. He gave me the understanding and the love and the care. So I just want to wish everybody a happy, beloved Christmas. Please remember those who are less fortunate than yourself. Don't wait for them to ask, because sometimes we don't want to ask. So just go and share the love, whether it's finance, food, or just stopping for a quick visit. And I just want to say thank you to my sister and my niece for um, hosting me. <laughs> I was looking for a fancy word, you know, so I just said, for hosting me, because I, I feel like, uh, um, a, no, not a visitor, that's not right. No, I feel like a princess. I feel like, you know, when you have stranger come to your house and you treat them with royalty, that's how I feel. And I'm so glad to be here with you at Glad Titan today. May God bless and keep you and take care. Thank you. And we will have our... Greetings, everyone. It's um, wonderful to be at home, and I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to see everyone. Just one part of me is missing is my mom. Everybody knows mommy's girl. But um, I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy to be here worshiping with everyone. It's always a pleasure to see Miss Abbott. And, uh, <laughs> um, you know, coming home is always a wonderful feeling. We all have all our challenges when we are overseas. I myself had a great deal of challenges this year, but um, I'm happy to be alive. I survived also two accidents this year, and 
Some of them in there isn't even no mechanical failure to the vehicle, but I survive and I, I just thank God. As I said, Jesus have the wheel, he do have the wheel, and I'm happy to be here and I'm grateful to see everyone. God bless. So thank you so much and we, we hope that you will enjoy a Vinci Christmas. Please do. And um, stock up, see if you could stock up some of our nice warmth. I don't know how you carry that back. We'll probably carry it back in your blood. Um, so Sister Avet is going to come at this time and do the announcements. Good morning, church. Please listen to the announcement. Please note that our Christmas Day service will be held from 5 a.m. on Monday, December 25th, 2023. The church will hold 21 days of prayer and fasting beginning January 7 to 27, 2024, under the theme, Rebuilding Through Prayer and Fasting. And we encourage all of you to make a commitment to this fast. Please note that our New Year's Eve service will be held on Sunday, December 31st, 2023 at 10 p.m. As Christmas draws near, it's a good time to appreciate our pastor and wife who have been a blessing to our congregation in so many ways. In spending many hours studying to share the word of God with us, visits during both crisis moments as well as times of great joy. In addition, our pastor has dedicated babies and grieved with us as we have buried loved ones, just to name a few. Let's reward them with a monetary gift this Christmas. Love gift offering envelopes are with the ushers. Please feel free to collect one. Remember, you can only have more for yourself by giving it away to others. May the Lord continue to bless you this holiday season and beyond. These are all the announcements. Bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>